welcome. Fight for the body. Amen. Um, turn with me to Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Um, I just really want to jump right into this. Um, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. This class, I believe, is one of the most crucial um, classes that we must gain an understanding, gain the power and authority that is needed because it's really the, 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 warfare that most in the body of Christ is dealing with, and that's with sickness. Um, the Lord said to me um, some time ago that the reason why we're seeing so much sickness in the body is because the enemy is using that spirit of infirmity as a distraction that would keep you trying to get healed, focused on the problem, rather than the promise. You all are being mantled with authority, and God is doing a new thing, because if any type of sickness that you're dealing with, today is the day you're going to kill that demon. Come on, raise your hand. Say, I'm, I'm a demon slayer. Everything that's not like God, got to go. Lord, thank you. Jesus, thank you. For the blood of Jesus. Lord, thank you for your power. Lord, thank you. I'm already healed. You have to use your authority because like we, we started on last week, we see we're dealing with two kingdoms. We're dealing with the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. There is a conflict in the earth realm. So there is a war against the enemy, which is the devil, and God, which you are his representative. Amen? And so God is saying in this war, it is invisible. You can feel it. You can see it. But yet you can't see the enemy that's attacking you. Today is the day. Today is the day. I must see in the supernatural. I must see in the spirit. I must see in the dimensions of the spirit where I'm seated in heavenly places. I see the enemy that's creeping around. You got to see the enemy that's creeping around. And the, the Bible has a lot to say, so we want to establish what the Lord says about Because one of the things I know is that the enemy, if you don't know who your adversary is, you're already in trouble. Let's look at Isaiah 40, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. We need to know what has God done for us. We need to know he done already healed us. Amen. He's already done it. Say he's already done it. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. He's already done it. It's finished. Now I have to enforce it. Somebody read Isaiah 53. You got the mic. Be 
to despise it. Surely he hath borne our grief, grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him strictly, submitting of God and afflicted. But he has but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and chastisement the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes, we are what? Healed. Let's say it together. With his stripes, we are healed. Let's, instead of his, let's say Jesus. With Jesus' stripes, we are healed. Now say I. With Jesus' stripes, I'm already healed. I'm already healed. Write this down. My atmosphere. My atmosphere. And my body must know my voice. My atmosphere and my body must know my voice. In other words, the atmosphere and your body must obey. When you speak, when you speak, you need. When you speak, you need to see results. So when we say that surely he has borne our griefs, we're talking about any sickness, any anxiety, and he's carried our sorrows, any pain. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression transgressions that means rebellion our sin he was bruised for our iniquities that's moral more our moral type mindset where we tend to do evil and hidden sin that's in the heart and the chastisement or the correction for our peace was upon him now, isn't that good news? The chastisement and the correction was upon him, and by his stripes, we were already healed. So how did sickness come in? Somebody tell me. Sin. And it started in the garden. When Adam sinned, it opened the door for the enemy to come in. So when we were born, we were born in what? Already. So we're born in sin, shaping in iniquity. So it takes us to get saved, right? But then it could be some other things that might be afflicting us. It could be something generational. Have you heard of generational curses? In other words, mom and them had, you know, they, grandpa had. All of them, y'all, y'all hear them say they had the sugar. Y'all ain't never heard that. All of them had the sugar. My grandbaby and I, and we're teaching her how to call those things that be not as though they are and how to draw a bloodline. Say, I got to draw a bloodline. She said, well, my daddy, you know, he had, he had um, diabetes. So, you know, that's something I need to look out for. What? Who raised your hand? Say anything that mom and them had, daddy them, it's not on me. The blood of Jesus stands against it. Today is the day I am getting it out by any means necessary. Touch your belly. Say get out. Get out. Got to get out. Got to get out. Say got to get out. Jesus had already took it. That's the thing. We got to resist the enemy by any means necessary when it comes to sickness, especially you all being generals. 
Because the enemy, as you begin to move out in the things of God, here it comes. Because the enemy wants to retaliate. The enemy wants to hit back. But in order for us to war effectively against the war, spiritual war and the physical war, we got to do it effectively. How do we do it effectively? One, we got to have knowledge. Because see, the knowledge that you know is going to make you free. Say make you. That word make me come alive. You're going to come alive. It's going to make you free. And the word of God says, someone tell me, and is it Hosea? What does it say? My people what? I didn't hear you. My people perish because of lack of sin. It's not religion. I'm telling you, religion going to kill you. Tradition will kill you because it accepts everything that's opposite of God. So when it comes to sickness and disease, religions say, you know, go on to the doctor, the state, whatever the doctor tell you now. And now the pharmaceutical companies, they give you something that starts something. I was a living witness. Soon we were getting ready to start the ministry. That week I was in the hospital. I said, well, what you say? You remember? I said, well, now, God, you're getting ready to do this thing. And went there, and I'm going to tell you something. Doctors couldn't find nothing, nothing wrong, because I knew it was an attack of the enemy. So what did I have to do? I had to resist it by any means necessary. Look at your name and say, you got to resist the devil. You got to resist the devil. So they said, well, you got acid reflux. I said, I ain't never had no acid reflux. I don't even know what that is. Well, do you know? Because you, I thought I had something going on with my belly. Say, take this. No, I was saying what the doctor said. <laughs> Y'all are good class. Y'all ready? <laughs> so he said, take this purple pill. And, um, you know. So I took the purple pill. Two days later, I had acid reflux. I'm not playing. I say, Lord, now, I'm believing you for my healing. I'm not going to take this stuff like this. And he said, 30 days. So for 30 days, I was in the Word. 30 days, I lost some weight. <laughs> 30 days, I found out some things that I was eating. I said, eating. It wasn't right. I began to lose the weight and I began to take supplements. I started taking enzymes. I started taking probiotics and I'm jumping a little bit. And all of a sudden, all of that started going away. Put your hands on your belly. It's somebody in here right now that's, that have a digestive problem. But I say today is the day your intricate system is lining up. In the name, come on, put it right there. It's lining up right now in the name of Jesus. It's a spirit of infirmity. And I curse it at the very root right now in the name of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus covers it. 30 days. And it was over got the word. Say, I got the word. He said I was healed. And so I believed him. For 30 days, did my mind start tripping? Oh yeah, it tripped. But you got to tell your mind, you're not the boss of me. So we got to have knowledge, but also we got to understand that we've been mantled with authority. If you don't use your authority, you will lose it. You can be passive. In other words, every time the enemy hits you, you get into a mode of doing nothing. 
And when you continue to be passive to, in other words, the enemy push you and you don't do nothing. He said, well, wait a minute. He said, oh, hold up. Say, guys, I pushed them. She didn't push back. She don't know the authority. She the policeman. Again. Say, guys, come on in here. They don't know who they are. Let's take over. Raise your hand. Say, I have been mantled with authority. I'm taking my authority back. Lord, forgive me if I didn't use my authority. Everything that's not like God. It got your authority must be restored. God gave you his authority. Turn to Luke. Who gave it to you? It's supernatural. You have to open your mouth. Because the battle is going to be personal. An enemy is going to come socially. He's going to come spiritually. And he's going to come physically. And that's where the enemy is having a field day. In the body. Say the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. It's over my body. The blood of Jesus. It's over my mind. The blood of Jesus. It's over my pathway. The blood of Jesus. It's over my destiny. The blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood. And the blood of Jesus has not lost its power. You, it's by your mouth. Come on, point to your mouth. It's by your mouth. The world was framed by the word. It came out of the mouth of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. And the word was with God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It's in your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those who love his fruit are going to eat it. You are framing your body has to know your voice. And it has to obey. Say body, point to yourself, say body. From this day forward, you obey me. Whatever I say, you're going to line up. You're going to line up. I was already healed. Every system in my body, line up. Line up to the perfection. God created you. Every system is working in harmony with each other. You cannot play with it. This is not play time. We're talking about sign wonders and miracles. How will they start by you laying on of hand and seeing them recover? Luke 10, 19, 17. Somebody read it. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said, you want me to And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample of servant and so, uh, I mean over servant and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any mean hurt you. Ne nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirit are subject to you, but rather be rejoice because your name is written in heaven. He said, don't rejoice because the demons are subject to you. That's normal stuff. Look at your name. Say, neighbor, demons are subject to you. They must obey you. You have the authority. You have the name of Jesus. 
Now use it. We can no longer be passive and allow the enemy to put anything that it wants to on you. What mom and them have, you got to say, they ain't finna come on me. I had to resist some stuff. When I came in that hospital, I said, oops, I, I see. I had to refuse it. I had to use what I had been taught. I had to use what I had read. I had to use what I had preached. Look at your neighbor say, I got to use what I know. In this season, you cannot preach it. You cannot teach it and not walk it. The reason why I say that because the enemy is on high alert. And he's not playing with nobody. So in other words, we can't be no tinkling cymbal and no sounding brass. We can't be forever learning and never coming into the knowledge of the truth. This is the day. Say, Lord, I might not know everything, but Lord, if you give it to me, I trust you that you will be, you enable me to walk it out. So, we got to use our authority. We can no longer be passive. Come on, take, your, take it back. As we move forward to heal the sick and heal ourselves, we got to also have the passion of God. We got to have his heart. We have to train ourselves for war. We have to have the knowledge. That's why you're here. You're gaining knowledge. And as you gain knowledge, there is an anointing. There's importation that's going to take place coming to a school. And you're going to gain your authority. Some stuff you're not going to take no more. And as you're sitting and you're learning of him, you're going to begin to receive his heart. What is his heart? Somebody tell me. What is his heart? Love. What else? Compassion. Mercy. What about healing? Huh? What about healing? Does he want to heal? Come on, does he want to heal? He wants to heal us. When we cry out to him, say, look, Lord, I am already whole. I'm already healed. This is what's happening right now. He is saying, hey, I'm ready because I'm touched by your infirmities. Say it's supernatural. Say it's supernatural. Our benefit, turn to Psalm 103. Wait a minute before we do that. He said in verse 18, stay right there. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So he's, a, he's the prince of the power of the air. But he, 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 his, his authority, Satan is powerful, but God is all powerful. But he only is powerful if you let him get away with it. He said, look, I've given you the authority to trample on the serpents. And scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you or hurt you. But nevertheless, do not rejoice in that the demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written. He said, Get happy about that because it's normal for the demons to be subject to you. Turn to Psalm 3. God has given us benefits, it's his heart. It is his heart for us to walk in divine health. And we have to take it. Why? Somebody tell me why we have to take it. Take our health. Take our money. Take our love. Take, just take everything that's ours. It's our birthright. 
It's our inheritance. He already paid the price for us to have. But do we have an enemy? We have an enemy. And it's up to you to kill ISIS. We have to do it. Who, do, who has to do it? We got to do it. Why do we have to do it? Someone answer that. Birthright. Huh? I can't hear you. Don't be scared. What'd you say? It's our mandate. And what else? It's finished. It is done. Say it's done. So if this is done, who is going to be the one to execute it? Huh? We have to execute judgment on the enemy. As it is in heaven, I can't hear you. As it is in heaven, as it is in heaven, so he said, thy will be done. Your kingdom come. Where? On earth. In my life. As it were. It got to line up with heaven. So is there sickness in heaven? It's unlawful. Raise your hand. Say, I'm not taking no more wooden nickels. Everything's been finished. I have been deputized. I've been deputized. Therefore, therefore, I'm going to use my authority. Because if not, it's like the enemy. Here you are in your house, and it's a commercial where the enemy is going in and out, stealing their stuff. And the person, the, the homeowner is right there talking about. He go to TV. He go to other TV. He go to computer. The enemy hates you. He comes to rob, kill, and destroy. And if you've never ever came against a spirit that's been in your life, it's okay. You got all of heaven backing you up. Say, so today is the day I got some strength. Come on, come on, flex it. Because see, knowledge gives you strength. And when you leave here, you better use it. Psalm 103. Somebody read it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Wait a minute. Forget what? Oh, wait a minute. He said forget. Let me see. Forget what? Not. Keep reading. Oh. He don't want you to forget the forgiveness. All. Oh. Keep reading. Reading. Who forgives all my? Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Uh, he did what? He healed. he healed how many? All. Only a few. All. Oh. We have to get serious because the enemy has infiltrated the church the enemy has come in to cause delay on your destiny but when you draw a bloodline and you say enough is enough and I'm going after my stuff I'm going after my healing I'm going after my children's healing for all, all generations I always say this family will be known for excellent health and long life. Amen. You know, you hear some people say, you know, our family, we've been so blessed. We live a long life. And we don't, we don't never get sick. Have you heard people say that? Yeah, come on, pull on that. Come on, raise your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. My family is known for long life and excellent health. We don't get sick. We don't get sick. Amen. What am I doing? I'm building something. With my words, keep reading. 
who redeems your life from destruction. Wait a minute. Not only does he heal all our diseases, but he redeems our life from destruction. Who crowns us with love and kindness and tender mercy and satisfy our mouth with good things. With good things. Sickness, is it a good thing? That's not a good thing. Remember there is a battle. Who is the battle against? The enemy is light, it's darkness. It's against the good and evil. Trying to make God out of a lie. By any means necessary to make God out of a lie. But we know the truth. Say today is the day. I'm moving forward in the truth. Forget not all your benefits. Then we just say as it is. So it is. So if you don't know your benefits, you, you'll be sucker punched. And you accept anything. Hoodwink, bamboozled. Homework. Name at least six benefits. Make it seven. Seven. I should do eight because it's new beginnings. Seven. So this battle, a personal war, is raging. It's, it's of the flesh and the spirit. And then you have a social battle. It's the world and evil sources and the spiritual battle, battle with evil supernatural powers. And then it's the fight for the body. But then I need to put number five. The mind. Because when this comes, your mind starts to trip. It began to try to call the shots. Put your hands on your head so you're not the boss of me. Say, Jesus is Lord over my mind. Jesus is Lord over my mind. Jesus is Lord over my body. The blood of Jesus is over my mind. The blood of Jesus is over my mind. Over my body. So you got to get armed and dangerous. Who do? You do. Who do? Who do? You do. Somebody read Matthew 4 and 23. Somebody get Luke 9 and 1. Who has Matthew 4 and 23? Just a second. Pass it, Mike. The other one is Luke 9, 1 and 2. Test. Matthew 4 and 3 reads, And Jesus went about. All Galilee teaching and then um, teaching there in synagogues and kingdoms and healing all manner of sicknesses, all manner of diseases among the people. He healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. All. all. Do y'all see that? Someone pass the mic, Luke 9 and 1. One and two. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Say it he again. He gave them power. He gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God 
and to heal the sick. Notice that sickness and demons are going hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is called a spirit of infirmity. Notice when he went about healing the sick, mm -hmm. he also was casting out demons. Mm -hmm. So is sickness a demon? Yes. That was easy. Read Acts 10, 38. Oh God, anointed Yeshua from Nazareth with the Ruha HaKadosh and with power. Uh, Yeshua went about doing good and healing all the people oppressed by the adversary because God was with him. Raise your hand. Ooh -wee. Doing good. Healing the sick. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Raise your hand. Say, I'm anointed with Holy Spirit. You are not, keep your hands up, you are not doing this thing on your own. It is God that's working through you. And when you allow Holy Spirit to work through you, you will do even the greater works than these, he said. Come on, raise your hand. Say, I've been anointed with Holy Ghost power. And I'm going to use it to heal the sick. I'm going to use my hands to lay hands on myself. And by Jesus' stripes, I was already healed. He said he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. When we say oppressed, somebody, somebody, tell me what is oppression? And where does oppression come from? Is there a mic back there? Oppression is to me is a spirit of heaviness and it comes from the enemy. And what does oppression do? Oppression causes you to to feel um Depressed, um, hopeless, sad, suicidal. <laughs> and torment, it brings torment. Torment is another spirit that works along with oppression. And together, they're destroyers of life. So we're dealing with a spirit of heaviness. That's the head honcho. Does everybody from last semester, those who do not have, try the spirit by the spirit. It's $5. I think we have a few. Try the spirit by the spirit. Everybody should get that because um, I know some people have um, strong man. What's his name? I, I use this one because it's dealing with the spirits that Jesus called out in the Bible. And every spirit that strong man has is under one of those head honchos. Not all of them, but um, try the spirit by the spirit. Are we dealing with a spirit of heaviness when we're dealing with oppression? Torment. You said torment? Mm -hmm. Torment. Spirit of heaviness, it is. And when we talk about, we're talking about a tree. Spirit of 
So we're talking about a tree and the branches or the fruit. Let's say fruit. See, fruit don't lie. Look at your neighbor and say, fruit don't lie. Because we're going to know the tree by is what? Fruit. So you got hope. Let's see what else is in this, um, despair, hopelessness, self-pity. Bondage and oppression also go together, but bondage is the head honcho. This tree is called a spirit of heaviness. Discouragement. Usually this monster pops up because or is planted because childhood rejection. And because that child was rejected at, 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 uh, um, as, you know, while they were young, a spirit of heaviness comes in, where they're, dis they're discouraged, grief-stricken, loneliness, hopelessness, torment, trouble, sadness. So when we're talking about oppression, where you're weighed down, and a lot of times the enemy deals with that spirit of oppression, especially in finances. Because you're trying to get out of it and look like it's that same vicious cycle. Held down and can't break out. Say, I'm breaking out. Come on, let me hear you say breaking out. Tell your neighbor, say, I done broke up out of this. I ain't in no more bondage. I'm taking names, and I'm calling them out. Well, raise your hand. Say, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Remember, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent takes it by what? Who is the violent? We are. So we got to do what? So he has, he said, don't forget your benefit. So if anybody is dealing with, with, um, if anybody is dealing with a spirit of heaviness, hopelessness, it's a spirit of heaviness, that's the, that's the head honcho. Here is, here are the branches. You got all the fruit, hopelessness, self-pity, you know, discouragement. Hopelessness. Did I say hopelessness already? Sadness. But also, it's never one. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it's never one spirit. Say, it's never one. So it's always a cluster. Cl <coughs> cluster. It's never one. Also, a spirit of bondage is there. Now, notice the correlation. Notice the correlation, and everybody needs this, and the spirit of bondage on page 10. The bruised branches. Okay, we have the bruised, the crushed, shattered life. Yes. The broken in heart, mind, soul, and body. The oppressed, all addictions to habitually give oneself up to uh, to cover to oneself up or over to and constant practice or to pursue a bad habit. Cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, habitants, excessive desire to gain, greed, 
covetous of wealth in order to hoard it, ambitious, driving, uh, what's a driving desire to obtain honor, super, 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 <laughs> superiority, power, and money, lust, excessive, sinuous, sexual desires, compulsive sin, rope. Oh, bound and able to break free, captivity under the power and dominion of authority. I'm, I'm sorry, dominions of another. Up here. You know a tree by what? You know a tree by what? Fruit don't lie. So I want you to begin to be one to examine yourselves. Because you have to draw a line and you have to start the fight if you haven't started the fight. You got to take back what's already yours. Is it your benefit? Whose benefits? He said, don't forget your benefits. He said, don't forget it. All your benefits. Don't leave nothing on the table. Y'all see that? Okay, turn with me to 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. So healing is for today. Have you heard that maybe healing is not for today? Isn't that something? They say that went out with the apostles. We have to take it back. You are God's healers, and that's what's happening. You're receiving a healing anointing. And you're going to begin to see more and more people come in your pathway that's going to need a touch from God. Raise your hand. Your hands are God's instruments that he's going to use to heal the sick. You've been commissioned to heal the sick. It's not where you've been. It ain't had nothing to be with, do with your degrees. It has nothing to do with your status in life. It's whosoever will. Second Corinthians. Somebody read that for me. Second, oh, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians two and eleven. Lest Satan, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So the Lord is saying, and we just want to. Th- just really hammer it as you're in spiritual warfare, but you've already won. At the cross, that's the finished work. He's already equipped you to win. In Jesus, we triumph and we win. Say, I done won. I done won. But it's up to you to come against the enemy. He said, the enemy is going about like a roaring lion, seeking who's not on their job. Seeking one that's, that's, that's laid back, that don't have an understanding. So he can devour them. When we say devour, what is that? To destroy. And he said in, 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 in Psalm 103 that he has to delivered our life from what? Destruction. John 10.10. 10.
John 10, 10. Someone read it, please. John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may might have it more abundantly. He came that we might have what? Life. But he said the enemy came to do what? To steal, kill, and destroy. You have to evaluate your family. See what fruit is in your family. See, fruit not, not going to lie. Look at your name and say, fruit ain't going to lie. You got you to gotta look at the tree. I began to look at the tree when I was in the hospital. I said, oops, that's not fixing to happen to me. I'm delivered. I'm set free. So, therefore, I got to preach to myself, and I got to do what I preach. So as we move forward into sign wonders and miracles, look around at the healers and miracle workers in here. Look around. Look at your neighbor. God going to use y'all. He's going to use me. But you have to walk in a level of authority where you don't play with the enemy. And it starts with in here. When you first see that enemy push you, you need to resist the enemy by any means necessary. Don't allow the enemy to play with your mind. Turn to, to 1 Peter. Because we were born in sin, sickness is in our realm. But we have to resist it by any means necessary because it's already done. Work is already finished. And we got to know who we are. We got to know who God is. Start with verse 6. Oh, 5. I'm sorry. I say today that you begin. It's the little bitty foxes that's poison. It's the little bitty things that you allow the enemy to get away with. I heard a saying, some of you, you give, give the enemy an inch, it That's what has happened in the church. All this hype and no demonstration. Before it's over with, we want wheelchairs and The blind, the lame, cancer, see it heal. We was in noon prayer one day at the ministry that we attend, and a lady came, one leg was longer than the other. I just believe. See, I just believe. So I told, sit down, and I just began to kind of pull her leg. Out. And when you begin to see these things, it's going to amaze you too. And as the leg start coming out, I done lost it. Because God is doing what he said. But if I don't move out in it, I never see it. Who works through you? Huh? 
Who works through you? It's not a trick question. Who works through you? Holy Spirit. You got to remember that you are the vessel. And he wants to work through you. Raise your hand. Your hands are his instruments. His instruments. You're going to begin to feel fire in your hand. Your hand's going to all of a sudden start getting heavy. You're going to start feeling heat. Your hands belong to God. You can put them down. 1 Peter 5, verse 6. You there? Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your cares upon him, here go his heart. Let's read together. For he cares for you. Then he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is walking about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, seeking those who are passive, those who are not on their post, to catch you slipping. But then he says something in verse 9. Let's read together. Resist him. What did he say? Resist him. Be steadfast. What that word steadfast mean? Firm. What else? A persistent. What else? Immovable. Don't let him shake you off your post on what you know. You are receiving knowledge of the authority. You know the heart of God. You know you got a war. Amen? But the good thing, you, you're taking a class that says God's calendar, when you get in line with God's calendar, your warfare begins to be a little bit easier. It's not the same. Because why? You, you have knowledge. And you're, you're aligned properly with his calendar. And guess what? If you know you're supposed to have um, $18.75 and they shortchanged you and they only gave you $2 and something, what you going to do? Let's say a hundred dollars. Huh? Let's say a hundred dollars and they only gave you eighteen eighteen dollars and seventy-five cents. You don't want to get shortchanged in the kingdom. You can't allow the enemy. The enemy is the biggest con artist. The biggest imitator of God. A liar from the beginning, the father of lies, a deceiver that counterfeit, try to imitate everything God, but flips. Say no more. That includes, because see, your, your, your walking in excellent health and your money is co connected. Poverty and a spirit of infirmity, they hang together. Where you could be going on trips, you got to buy a prescription. I'm not saying anything about prescription. I took my purple pill. But God told me 30 days. I wanted to see for myself. Put your hands right here. It's a new day, a new way, a new anointing is falling upon me. I'm going all the way. I need to see signs and wonders. I need to see miracles. That's what's missing in the church. People are crying out. Where's the God of Elisha? Where's the demonstration of the power of God? Who still believe that he's able?
resist the enemy. Be firm in your faith. Be immovable in your faith. Faith is right here. It goes along with forgetting out all your benefits. Faith is right there. Because all of this is by what? Faith. Be steadfast in the faith, knowing the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, that after you have warred a little while, that he will perfect you, that he will establish you, he will strengthen you and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God is making us whole. Our spiritual eyes are open. Don't allow fear to overtake you. There's no fear. Fear is a spirit. And if you play with the spirit of fear, it has a whole bunch of them that come with him. Lion spirit hangs with the spirit of fear. Uh, Antichrist spirit hangs with the spirit of fear, because it comes against the knowledge of God. One more scripture, and this is a scripture we need to to confess, speak out over ourselves on a regular. That's 1 Corinthians 2. You have to remember there is a war that's going on. It's between God and the devil. But you got to remember we are God's foot soldiers in this invisible war. Satan doesn't have legal authority over us anymore. But he does have power to operate in our lives if we don't take authority over the enemy. You there? Four. First Corinthians 2, verse 4 and 5. And my speech, let's read together, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in what? Demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, come on, but in the power of God. Not in the wisdom of men, but who? Our speech and our preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration. Demonstration of what? The spirit and the power. Mark 16, verse 14. We want demonstration. My grandkids, they turn around, Grandma, I, I, I have a um, headache. Lay hands on me. They know something happens. When we lay hands. And great expectancy. You got to expect it. Expectancy is, is, is our faith. We expect it to happen. As a matter of fact, just give me um, a definition of expectancy and um, a, a scripture that goes along with expectancy. You might Expectancy might not be in the King James or the New King James, but a scripture that, that is in, um, related to our expectancy. 
we should have expectancy. We should expect God to move with an outstretched neck, looking for him, to move with power. Mark 16, start with verse 14. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And those signs will follow those who believe. Oh, these signs. In my name, let's read together. They will, in my name, let's, let's start over. In my name, they will cast out demons. Let's start over and say I. In my name, I will cast out demons. I will speak with new tongues. I will take up serpents. And if I drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt me. I will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Y'all see that? So then after the Lord has spoken to them, he had received up. In, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they and you went out. And you preach the gospel of the kingdom everywhere. The Lord working with you and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Say demonstration. From this day forward, the company signs shall be seen. As I speak, I shall see. As I speak, I shall see. As I speak, I shall see. My atmosphere knows my voice. My body knows my voice. Therefore, as it is in heaven, so it is in my life. And I bear fruit, and it's good fruit, and the fruit remains. Amen? Any questions? Anybody? Comments? Let us stand. I, I saw all you all shift tonight. I did. And that's a good thing. I mean, I see y'all going out the door saying, I ain't taking no more wooden nickels. You're a soldier. You're an ambassador. You're a general. You're God's elect. You're his special people. God got it going on. Pastor Steve, you want to dismiss us? Friday, we, we um, celebrate the head of the year, the Feast of Trumpets, and you can come and celebrate with us. Um, as we bring in the new year, 775, and that's that tabernacle on fire um, right here. Dear God, praise us and glory and honor yours, Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Father, we just love you. We love your presence. There's healing in your presence. We thank you, Father God, for the the great teaching tonight. Seal it in our hearts. Help us be, as we learn, to step up and do what you teach us. Help it be like an innate ability that we do well. Help us learn your word. and the authority that we have with the power that you've given us, Father. Help us, Father God, stand like never before. Help us see with your eyes. Help us be your voice. Help us be your power in all situations in the darkness. Help us speak life in the world. Help us, Father God, stand with the authority of the army angels of God. Thank you, Father God, for the healing angels of God. 
Thank you, Father God, that we have shifted and we have changed. Thank you, Father God, that we won't see things the same, that we will lay our hands on people and people will be healed, that we have a new anointing of power and authority. And Father God, thank you, Father God, for the, the thunder in the apostles' voice. Thank you when they speak, I hear thunder. Thank you, Father God, for Rabbi Brown. Thank you, Father God, for teaching us the importance of the Sabbath and your feast days. Thank you, Father God, for instruction, for knowledge. Help it, Father God, be a part of our being that will never change and will never go back. We give you our hands, we give you our bodies, we give you our lives to be that that you want us to be. We stand with authority. We stand with your passion and your love. We love you for all that we are. Use us, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for teaching us and help us step up as we see the need through your eyes in the spirit. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Please read in your manual um, chapters 4 through 10. Everyone should have their homework. If you didn't receive your homework, it's in the back. I want everyone to begin to take communion every day. Get three scriptures and begin to confess those three healing scriptures over your life every day of Jesus' return. Because now you're building a wall. Amen? Just three healing scriptures, memorize them, speak them over yourselves every single day, and start taking communion. And we'll talk about the importance of communion next week in the healing process. Amen? Amen.